Well, it's been a while since I've unboxed an MSI board, and the reason for that is that I haven't had any sort of really interesting, like really interesting new stuff to unbox from them lately, but today I've got the NF750 G55 motherboard. This is an NVIDIA Enforce SLI board. It's an Enforce 750 board, which is something there's almost none of on the market, so that's why I grabbed this, because right now, this seems to be the best value SLI board on the market. So it's uh, it's a pretty unique motherboard in that respect. Why don't we get this thing opened right up? Let's do a quick sort of highlight of what features they are gonna call out here. So you got your easy OC switches for successful OC, active phase switching, okay, power saving, and then some, some something about lossless audio, awesome. Okay, so let's get this open. It is, oh, it's also Windows 7 ready, check that out. Very good. So it supports Phenom 2 X4s and uh, everything under that, I'm going to go ahead and assume. You've got support for DDR3 memory on this motherboard, but we'll get to that later. First of all, we will find the Drivers and Utilities DVD. Uh, pretty much don't use anything on there. You're going to want to download the latest off the MSI website. Then here we will find the Quick Installation Guide, which is uh, quite big, but the reason... Oh no, wow, they've actually got like everything on here. They show you how to do the CPU, how to do the RAM, how to do the IDE and SATA optical, how to install graphics cards, how to do the front panel connectors. That's great. They give you a little diagram there. That's really handy. Okay, they show you the power settings installation. Hey, they only show you the 24-pin power. Don't forget to do your 8-pin. All right, so we'll go ahead and close that up. Um, yeah, I'll do that later. Okay, then we have the MSI... NF750 G55 user guide. So that's the detailed guide. Again, it's in a bunch of languages. Shows you all of the ins and outs of this motherboard. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah, it is in different languages. Okay, good. Then we have an SLI bridge. What kind of SLI motherboard would it be without an SLI bridge? You can see the spacing looks like a four-slot spacing based on that bridge. But since it's a flexi bridge, who knows? Then we have our IO shield. Then we have a, oh, a gray IDE cable. That's just hideous. Then we have a Molex to SATA adapter and one SATA cable. So the assumption MSI seems to be making here is that users will be using a DVD optical uh, IDE drive and then a SATA uh, hard drive or SSD drive, I guess. All right, then we've got our little environmentally friendly paper packaging followed up with some environmentally not friendly foam, but what are you going to do? We got some plastic here. Let's take this off and have a look at the layout of this board. Now, like I said, this is one of the most aggressively priced SLI boards on the market right now. So you're not going to find necessarily all of the features you'd find on a more um, on a more high end board. But you do have the Easy OC switch. All right. So I'm not actually sure where that is, but. Here's the little button for it. It shows like a little uh, gear shifter thing. That's pretty cool. And then you've got the power saving features. Okay, active phase switching. So let's take that off. All right, general layout. Your SLI slots are one, two, three, four. Well, they're only three apart, but you've got two PCI Express 16. You have two usable PCI Express 1X and one PCI slot that you're only really going to be able to use if you're not using another card. So you don't have much on this board in terms of expansion slots, especially if you're running SLI. However, if you're only running one card, you're going to end up with a couple PCIe 1s of PCIe 16, which can be used as 16, 8, 4, or 1, and then you've got a PCI slot. So that's not actually too bad. Down here, you've got three USB headers, which I really like to see. I hate seeing only one. Then you've got an onboard power switch. You know what? MSI has really stepped up to the plate here. They're putting onboard power switches on most of their boards, which is incredibly handy when you're troubleshooting. I love that. All right, then over here, we've got five SATA ports, which may seem like an odd amount, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess, yeah, there we go, that we have eSATA on the back, and that's where your sixth port is. Here is our chipset. You're pro I'm just taking a wild guess here. This is an Enforce chipset. You're probably gonna wanna do what you can to keep it cool. All right, then you've got support for, like I said before, dual channel DDR3 memory. Here along the right-hand edge of the board in its ideal location is your 24-pin power. And then up here, I mistakenly said this would have an 8-pin. This has a 4-pin power connector. This is an AM3 ready board, obviously, because you do have support for DDR3 and you do need an AM3 chip in order to take advantage of DDR3. This is actually, oh, I really like this. Check this out. This is a really sort of beefy looking uh, VRM cooling solution for such a an entry level board. And I really like the way that they've sort of built it around everything in there. It's it's the little touches, you know, that's where, uh, that's where a motherboard can really stand out because they've all got the same basic features, but it's just those little 
things, right? Here is the Easy OC switch, which I'm not sure how to use. I've never seen this one before. Their new thing is OC Genie, so it seems like this is kind of the more value option. Okay, this supports SLI and hybrid SLI. Oh yeah, so this has onboard video. Check that out. Okay, we got a couple PS2 ports, one for the mouse, one for the keyboard. We have VGA, DVI, and HDMI out. Then we have six USB ports, one gigabit ethernet, and 7.1 audio. There's the back of the board. You got your AM3 backplate, and there is your serial sticker. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the NF750 G55.